How's it going everyone? Welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers and today we're going to continue our discussion from last week's episode where we talked about uh, the deformers in Harmony. Uh, we're going to talk about how we can move into a more creating a more complex rig and some of it gets a little techy and it gets a little deep so please hang in there with me the best that you can. But first let's dive in into Harmony and last week Eddie Young, viewer Eddie Young, had a couple questions that maybe I glossed over in previous tutorials and it had to do with the toolbars and how to customize them. If the toolbar is not showing you can simply right click in the gray area next to it and the customize will appear. If you click that it pulls up a bunch of buttons uh, they're generally context sensitive or they're associated with that layer in some fashion. A lot of this is up to you to pick out what you are familiar with or what you feel comfortable with. Uh, again, if it's not showing, if the toolbar is not showing, you can right click in the space next to the tab itself. And by clicking that, it will make it go away. This is one of those little finicky things about Harmony. Um, if I was to right click in the tab next to it, Customize does not appear anywhere in here. Customize will only appear if I'm right clicking in the space next to the, next to the toolbar. Again, all of these tabs all have a gray space up here next to the in the in the tab area that will allow me to sh pull up a toolbar that's associated with that tab. <clears throat> and a lot of it, like I said, is con is contextual. It has to, it deals with uh, what's going on in that particular tab. I don't need that. I don't like to look at that. <clears throat> which brings me to my toolbar, my tool properties, and the tool properties, which was another question Eddie had for me. The tool uh, tool properties is another contextual menu that is that will show you whatever tool you currently have selected will show you all the operations that are associated with that. Right now I have the pencil uh, selected but if I was to hit my brush it changes depending and it'll show me all the brush operations. Same with my select it shows me all the operations that are associated with the select. So that being said to bring us back into the conversation about this week uh, the rigging tool has its own same set of operate or its own operations nested inside of the tool properties. This is kind of a catch-all for all of our tools. Another question that was given uh, or asked was the um, automatically create group when creating a new deformation rig. This is an option I believe by default is checked and what that does is when you start creating a chain it will automatically nest let me find an example in here it will automatically start nesting it inside of a group so here's all the you know, here's all the, the nodes associated with the deformation that's on the other arm. Uh, if I was to just get rid of that, if I was to just turn like, turning this off, if I was to just start like clicking like crazy in here, uh, like here, here's all the bones and they're just kind of like randomly thrown out here. It's a little bit of a mess. Undo all of this. Goodbye. Go away. Uh, if I have this checked, if I and I'm gonna just click like crazy, click 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 click. All those nodes now are nice and neat inside of that little group there. So my advice: just keep that thing checked off. It will just make your life a heck of a lot easier. It just keeps things cleaner. So moving into tonight's topic, the deformation. What am I doing here? Let's get out of this. Uh, and then go back into the arm here. We're gonna focus on this arm. Uh, and this node is associated with that arm here, or this layer if you're using essentials and, or advanced. Um, so we can do, what can we do? So the deformer is existing through time. So I want to quickly just create another deformer. I want to click, 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 adjust my articulation a little bit in the setup mode. Okay, looks great. And if I rotate, that hand is being left behind so we can drag a kinematic output, bring that in, connect it, and connect it, and bam, you see the hand automatically snapped to the end of the deformer. Again, the kinematic output is just pulling out the X and Y information from the le very last bone, by default that is, of the chain. So that's good for having hands and things follow around. Great. Okay, so that's good. So if we go and put a keyframe down here, you know, <clears throat> so that's great. And one thing I'd like to show you that here's this blue layer here I color coded is the arm itself. So if I take the arm and just kind of make it disappear, you'll see that the chain is still existing in our camera view. That means the two of them are independent of each other. And again, that's also great because that means we can swap designs out in and out very quickly. 
um, and easily. Um, you can attach things a little more easily. It's not really overly dependent upon what the artwork is per se in that art in that layer. Um, so that also means that we can let me let me expose this again. F5. <clears throat> that means what we can do is if I added a little bit of animation in here, is there going to be? Let me just move it so that we have something happening, right? Yeah. Is there something going? Yeah, good. Okay, and if I play it, there it is. Okay, that means if, like, you know, at some point in time, he the character gets, like, paint on the sleeve here. If I was to just go to the arm, the artwork of the arm, if I duplicate it, and if I go into my drawing view, grab my brush, get a color, like something like, uh, yeah, like blue, and here's some paint that just splattered on his arm. And there, bam, at that point in frame, oh, here comes the paint, yuck, you know, and it's so it makes it very easy to automatically, you know, put things on there. But, and again, this is also, we can reuse the animation too. We can take this exact chain, as long as the artwork of the arm is the same length, the chain will work. So in that case, it's another benefit of having it working across time the way it does. What if we wanted to, and let me just get rid of this. What if we wanted to say we wanted to radically put a whole new bone in there? Let's say we wanted to put a curve deformer in there. Well, we can do that by first duplicating the artwork. Right, so now we have another arm. I'm pretty sure I probably have three arms in my layer now, or in my drawing substitution. And if I once I've duplicated my artwork, I can go up to my deformer toolbar, and we can click this option up here, create new deformation chain. And when I do that, pay attention to what happens. Boop! Gone. The chain is gone. It's giving me the option now to put a new chain in there. So what I'm going to do is, using my rigging tool, I'm going to click and drag, click and drag, and I now just created a curve deformer that's existing in here, and it's using the same artwork. And it's getting clicky in there because, it's, <laughs> you know, once it gets to that keyframe, it's going to automatically swap over into the new chain. And again, so now we now are be able to control which which deformation we want to use by drawing substitution. So if I just move forward in time at frame 40, and if I switch back switch back over to drawing number one, there's our deformer for there. If I wanted to go in frame 50, I'm just randomly picking up 50 using my drawing substitution. I can go back to my curve. Bam! There's my curve deformer. So now we're using drawing substitution to select what our curve will be, which again is pretty powerful. We can build up some pretty interesting um, and layered animation. It takes a little bit of mm, finesse and know-how, which again will go just beyond the scope of this tutorial, but it kind of gives us a lot of control over what we are going to show. Uh, what, oh, excuse me, what, we can, what kind of deformer we can um, uh, use. So let's see. The next thing I think I would like to show you guys is how this can eventually get pretty complicated. And what we can do if we start building up more and more and more of them. I, I don't suggest you use too many. Um, I'd like to show you that up here in our drop down box, next to our drop down box, is a little guy that says Rename Transformation. And if we click that guy, it's going to give us the option to rename that particular curve or excuse me that particular deformation so we know that number one because we just know by the we already made it we're just gonna call that one bone we can call it bone and number two is the second one we made that was curve I'm gonna call it curve and hit ok yeah C U R V E hit OK and now our little drop down box up there has just changed and what I'd like to show you is let's kill these really quickly uh, let's do another one. Let's just duplicate our drawing again. And as you can see, when I hit duplicate drawing, it zonked the uh, it zonked the uh, the deformer. And I want to change the color of his sleeve. Let's just pretend he has a, a, a costume swap. I don't know. And we'll go into the color. And I'm, I'll stick with blue, right? And I'm just going to recolor my my sleeve. Okay. But let's just say I want to reuse that animation that I had previous, this, this animation going on up here. Well, I can go to my sleeve, or excuse me, my arm that I just recolored to blue, and if I use my drop-down box, I can go to bone, and it will assign the bone deformation to that new drawing. Again, this gets very complicated very quickly if you're not kind of paying attention to what your drawings are, what the numbers of the drawings sometimes are. 
Uh, and if I wanted to, I can dupe it again. And in this case, I'm going to pick, do I have a yellow, something bright? Sure, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna draw a stripe in there. It's got some stripes now. And for this one, I'm going to assign it the curve using my drop down, and there's my curve. So again, this is a pretty nifty way of reusing animation, of adding, uh, of adding lots of different types of deformation to build up a more complex rig. I'd like to dive in, before I wrap up, I want to dive into my group up here. And again, this is for Harmony Premium only, uh, since it has the node view. Um, if you dive into this group, you, the, 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 the group, the, the structure has changed once we going back from the beginning once we hit create new deformation chain what goes on in here is a little different it adds a node for us called transformation switch and if I was to click the properties of the transformation switch some of this may look familiar suddenly to you because we can see bone and curve that we renamed already and these numbers in here are the exact drawings of our library so if I go down here, what is this, number 38, this curve? You can see over here number 38 is in our curve. We can also manually do this. So if I, I want to just select my arm, I want to hit duplicate again to totally zonk it. Um, what can I do now? Make the, I'm just going to make them red. Red. Great. So now they're red, right? And I believe this is drawing 45. If I manually type in 45 in here, the, the curve is, it's the same, this is accomplishing the same thing as the drop down up here. Um, it's just a bit more of a manual way of kind of controlling it. It's neither here nor there, really. Either, either one of them is accomplishing the same exact thing. Again, that gets very, uh, it gets complicated very quickly if you're not kind of paying attention to what your curve, what curves are you using or what or what deformer you're using at what point in time. And each of these, uh, I mean, it, this should look pretty familiar to you when you jump into these. Each of these uh, groups are the nodes associated for, here's the bone one, and number two, it's the second one I made, here's the curve one I made, and so, and so on and so forth. If I added another one, so let's, why don't we hang out in here and see what happens. I will duplicate this yet again, and I'm just gonna get rid of these. And I'm going to create a whole, I'm going to, this is probably going to break what I did, but I'm going to do it. As you can see, it's building in my node view over there. Let me undo what I just did. As I build, i got to select my layer. As I build my structure, look, in, look over here in my node view. As I start building, it's creating, I'm going to click like crazy. And if I click inside of number three, which is the third chain, there's all the bones that are in there. So there you go. <laughs> Again, this gets pretty nutty after a while. And I don't suggest you get too crazy with it. Uh, you know, it, it, this is a very good way of creating lots of def deformation using only one set. All this is being controlled by one layer, which again is pretty powerful. I think that'll wrap it up for tonight. Again, this is a pretty heavy one. Uh, next week, I'm not quite sure which one, which topic I'm going to be covering, uh, but I do this every Monday. You can please please check it out. You're going to see some links up here in front of you. Uh, I do the uh, I do a live sketch every Wednesday at noon during my lunch. The Wednesday lunch live sketch, noon Eastern Standard Time. Please click uh, some of those links. Check out some of the stuff I do there. Uh, I also do some random animation here and there. I also have some of my my uh, uh, some professional animation demo reel clips that I post from here and here and there. Uh, I think I have one I would like to work on it from Wonder Pets uh, that I did a couple years back. I'd like to maybe post it up on my YouTube channel. And of course, I also do the Toon Boom Harmony tutorials. Let's also not forget that red subscribe button down there. You can click that and follow me, uh, and you get you'll know all this stuff. You'll get you'll get all the information really quickly. It's amazing. <laughs> That said, I thank you very much for joining me here tonight, guys. You have a good one, and take care.